or two. Hello, Ron. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Best Materials podcast. Uh, finally, it seems we've got uh, everything sorted out now. We've finally got the old uh, uh, audio interface back. So I've been uh, it's been a while, uh, it's been a good couple of months, uh, really. So anyway, here we are. Uh, welcome, everyone. All, all is well. Uh, today's date is Monday, 16th of May. Oh, we're halfway through May already. Can you believe it? Anyway. So, yeah. Uh, still looking uh, for a final place to put the studio. Hopefully it'll be available soon. And we'll get back to business. Uh, it's been a mad few months, like I keep saying, looking back. But also looking forward. We managed to sort of like extend our skill set. And maybe took a bit of a wrong, wrong turn in. Like well, there was a lot to learn with it as regards like the Linux command line and setting up Linux Apache, MySQL, and PHP. I'm trying to get the Adobe Dreamweaver to work with it as well. Uh, a little bit too complicated, really. We got pretty well. We did all right. We, you know what I mean. We uh, got pretty far with it. So looks like one of my mics looks like my mics aren't set to an equal. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that, that was. The, uh, the mission, create a website, get on with his Adobe tools. Yeah, pretty amazing, really. A uh, lot of stuff to learn. It's The next target, obviously, is Adobe XD. So the Adobe XD prototype tool. We kind of got it, our heads around it a little bit. So, yeah, we'll only, we'll only say we have six months' experience, really, using that sort of thing. Uh, normally, we'd uh, built in code. So we'd do everything uh, in uh, Notepad with... Uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Something that, as a business, might might uh, if you have the occasional work, that yeah, yeah, that might work. But there's something that's probably not going to go down too well in the business world. I think uh, they're always looking for the ability to continue projects. So obviously, like yeah, well-known quality types, even though they're extremely skilled and stuff like that. I'm probably the sort of people you want to get in as a consultant on your project. But uh, anyway, so yeah, what a what a fucking what a time what a time to be alive! Uh, what, all this crazy stuff that's going on, like it's been totally mental. But it's one of them we just plow on, we we'll just keep going. Uh, we've got the drum machine. So anyway, so we're using now the uh, the Behringer RD6 computer control drum machine. Uh, the interface is great for that. Uh, obviously, it's a Behringer interface this time as well with the MIDI. And obviously, on Ableton, you can just swap out the sample patch. You, straight away, you can make miles better beats. It's not the most expensive fancy drum machine in the world. It's a computer-controlled analog drum machine, the Behringer RD6, which we'll probably break down if we get something out there that's worth uh, keeping people up to date about. It's worth uh, writing home about, really, or putting on your social media, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's one of them. So, uh, yeah, so what we've got on for the month of May, uh, looking to upgrade the website and get that Dreamweaver tool linked in, could do we sort of like, I don't know, there's been some interest in the C++ ASAP and, you know, some interest in the production skills and stuff like that, but uh, generally speaking, we just need to uh, have the time and the place and the, the mental state really to get that uh, work down. It's not, uh, most people have kind of moved on now, haven't they? Like, it's all Python, really. Yeah, there's still some mythos about C++, but then again, what do you need to program for when you can use Adobe or you can use Unreal Engine or you can use Blender? Uh, so there's a lot of, and there's smaller and smaller apps that do just very small parts of the job are getting cheaper and cheaper anyway on, on your Android tablet or your mobile smartphone. So it's one of them. Adobe is massive, though. So you can do loads with it. It's got everything, really. So yeah, it's a, you know, it's it's, it's more geared towards industry, really. But any individual uh, graphic designer, website designer, uh, t-shirt designer, if you're into it, definitely worth the investment. Uh, obviously, you might struggle at first to get a paying client uh, in the beginning, or you have to work like uh, take take on jobs that, generally speaking, you ought to get paid more for. 
something like that, a bit of undercoating and that. It depends who you are, really. Um, you know, the sort of like sort of things that people are looking for, really. Uh, if you're like me, you're coming from the audio side of things. Uh, perhaps your uh, social skills aren't, aren't the best. If you're dealing with musicians, uh, especially like guitarists and stuff like that, they've always got a bad attitude. Right, so, you know, they've got some of them are pretty good se- session musicians and stuff like that. But generally speaking, there's a bit of a, you know, a bit of a fucking thing. Right, it's uh, we had a mega DJ blowout this weekend, six hour DJ set. Didn't record it though, didn't plan it either, but it, it turned out pretty decent. We really, might have to get back on with that. We're always behind, always, always never on time, always behind schedule, always never met, doing everything. It's all like according to plan and according to the timetable, it's, it's a bit, all a bit chaotic, truth be told. Alright, so yeah, what have we got on next? Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, so anyway, oh, 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 we might have uh, tech on a few podcasts and a few audio books. Right, it looks like some of that's coming down the line. Do we get anything out of it? Uh, we'll let you know. Obviously, when we're doing the audio book, we do it solid state record, two solid state record out of the box using some rack mount equipment as well, channel strips and graphic EQs. That way, the, you know, we don't have issues as, as well as the length. Uh, audio books generally speaking tend to be ten hours plus, seven hours plus, and that. And uh, yeah. Sometimes your computer can't handle that amount of audio at the same time. And it totally depends on like uh, I think we might we might start at seven eight, seven hours or something eight hours before we begin, begin to have issues. So yeah, here we are. We've got the new build, the i twelve new build, and we're get looking at upgrading the microchip shortly. So getting the i nine chip on it. It's pretty decent. It can handle everything Adobe uh, Blender pretty decently, really. And uh, obviously, Call of Duty as well. It seems to be taking up way too much of the internet. But it's a great game. It's, get, it's a bit boring and repetitive for my liking, like, but it's amazing, really, how far it's come on since, like, whatever, the early 2000s. I used to play it back in the day. And obviously, back there, it was unreal. Like, uh, what else have we got? I should have uh, made some notes. Uh, really, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, just waiting for the work to come in now. Uh, I reckon we'll get down and we'll, we'll cut some beats uh, using this comp, this analog drum machine, computer controlled all day six. Uh, there might even be something that I can uh, maybe mix it in at the background. Yeah. So as as ever, we're just using uh, we mic'd up now with the uh, Behringer Audio interface, going straight into Adobe Edition. Like, ah, yes, there was a question about uh, these uh, NVM. So we've got issues uh, all across Linux. Like, um, uh, if you heard the previous podcast, or what you might have re- heard me talking, heard me discussing it. So there's issues with regards to onboard audio on the motherboard and audio inside of the uh, microchip as well, where it has an uh, onboard GPU. So it has in the chip GPU that also deals with audio. And there seems to be, in particularly in line, there seems to be some sort of conflict at the very first PCI lane. So there's a Linux boot script, like a Grub boot script, that uh, locks out PCI lanes or doesn't add them to the core or something like that. So the PCI lanes get loaded last or loaded later. And I think that'll be the issue. Like, so a lot of people are a bit struggling with that issue. Uh, we talked about it before, you'd be probably better off uh, blanking out your motherboard onboard sound or using a, a chip that doesn't have onboard graphics because then you need an, uh, you need a graphics you know, a graphics card, basically like NVIDIA or AMD graphics card. Uh, it's getting ridiculous though, you know, the price is the 24 gig, well, 24 gig graphics card, you're paying it, what, 600, 700 quid for it? Unbelievable, really. So that's, even the most expensive Intel chip is like 700, 800 quid, so it's still 60% of your bill, really. So you're gonna sp- you can you know you can spend 60% of your budget on a graphics card. That's it. that's very very like upmarket and lucrative, isn't it? It's like you know that's a bit. Well, I guess it's uh, what it takes, really. It's not a simple thing, really. It's not really that complicated. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You just, all you've got to do is put the pieces together in the right way. You just make sure you don't uh, damage it, right? But apart from that, 
Yeah, it's probably better off. Well, it does allow the component object module. We've discussed this. It does allow piecewise upgrades, you know, bit by bit and time, you know, step by step. And we're looking to swap out. We've been on this now a few months. This uh, i5 12th gen. It's the cheapest i5 12th gen. Blown away by it, really. So I'm just wondering how great we. Uh, how much more we can push for this uh, i9 and get a f few more percents uh, performance and uh, what else have we got yeah but it still can't afford the DDR5 to PCI5 there doesn't seem to be any PCI5 graphics cards out there anyway yet so that being said it's one of those things isn't it Intel obviously I realise now we've played everybody out they played all the like I say on the i5 stuff it only has can only handle X4 PCI, so the other versions of the chip, the more expensive one, can handle the uh, more PCI lanes, the greater number of PCI lanes, you see, So, which is probably why they're more expensive, to take up more parts, it's more complicated to build, what have you. For your money, uh, if you take it back to the 90s, the computers we were building in the 90s, Intel Pentium had just come out, uh, they had the AMD K5, as well, it was a little performer. Uh, the Intel, obviously, the first gen Intel came as like a bit like a, a, a cartridge, you know, from a games console. Uh, and you know, they were selling for like two thousand five hundred pound back then. You know, we'd probably build a budget system for just shy of a grand back then, which has less power than your mobile phone these days. So it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? Like Twenty five years is a long time to be building computers. It's probably, it's probably. Yeah, it's, it's probably a little bit more. You know, the nineties was all about time computers and tiny computers. And uh, well, so there's still a few retailers that were alive then and still alive today, but very competitive, like especially with Amazon stuff like that. So, I guess with a YouTube channel and social media advertising stuff like that, that's you know you're getting that extra value for money by having somebody you can contact and talk to about your needs for whatever whatever build you need or what have you. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, hold on a sec. So what else, what else? We had the mega DJ blowout this, week, this weekend, six hour DJ mix, so uh, drum and bass. Uh, I might revisit that. What else have we got? Yeah, really should have uh, wrote a list. We'll get back to producing some music anyway. Uh, Yeah, there's something that some there's something on my mind that I felt important enough to discuss. Well, I've totally forgotten it now. Uh, what else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're looking at getting a base bin, like a KLK base bin, cheap, cheapest UK one. Actually, everything's cheapest. Like, if you check out all the other projects we've built so far, and that cheapest always comes into it. So we might hit a base bin. Like really, uh, the sound quality on this bearing jaw interface is shocking for the money. Really, they retail now at about two hundred and forty quid. Obviously, we're just using the entry level KOK Rocket Fours. Getting on a bit here, like you know what I mean. But they sound absolutely fantastic. They do need a minimum amount of power going through them, though, so they need at lower volumes. And this is uh, it's revealed an issue with Windows. Like I think, uh, I think something's you know there's definitely like conflicts going on at the motherboard level at board support package level we refer to it as board support package or jtag level basically there's definitely I've, there's definitely issues definitely like i can hear it. Uh, it thankfully it doesn't go through onto the recording uh, we can actually hear it in 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 the speakers and stuff like that you hear it in the mix like a little bit of buzz or a little bit of fuzz not totally uh chalked out like it's not totally uh sort of sorted right and uh i think that's to do with uh my personal opinion is the way these windows device drivers are signed right and obviously there's conflict because the right now the pc has got free audio interface it's got the audio on board the graphics uh card or sorry on, on board the motherboard like as that's the hit uh, the onboard Realtek 97 
Uh, obviously on other ones with onboard motherboard and if you have a chip that has onboard graphics we don't but then you can have an issue with it all conflicting it doesn't know which way to go and uh, so there's definitely something not like conflicts with these NVM type solid state drives they're very like the tiny slice type solid state drive uh, not the disk drive one not the SSD one but the next gen one the little thin slice one like very fast though I mean, it's mind-blowingly fast. It's unbelievably quick, in, in even in, like, and especially for the money, but uh, some of these builds, are, you're looking at 2,100 quid just for the graphics card and the, on the chip, like, which is insane, really. It doesn't improve the quality of the audio, like, whatsoever, you know, from, coming from a mixing perspective, like, so it's one of them. Ridiculous, really, but what what can you get on the other end of the spectrum, really, like bargains and stuff like that? Well, uh, going forward, if we if we were to rerun the basic materials project, it's you know, the cheapest build in the UK one. Well, we managed to build in at two hundred and fifty quid all in, semi decent unit. But then again, we've got issues with it on board graphics and the on board sound and conflicting with the NVM disc. That you know, just it happens to be there's some issues, not all of it. Like it's one of those things, ain't it? Sometimes you get a little, you know, a little, little, uh, little problem area there, right? And uh, that's on the other unit with the i12. Sorry, the i5 12 gen had no issues whatsoever. Like it's uh, pretty decent, really. Uh, blown away by it. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else we've got coming up? Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to remind myself for next episode to take notes. Really. All right. Thank you for uh, listening. Hopefully, this has solved uh, our sound quality, and our sound quality will be back to good sound quality from here on in. All right, everyone. Thanks very much. Remember to hit the website www.thebasementmaterialsproject.com or hit us up on Mixcloud or SoundCloud or on the YouTube channel. Dearly appreciate your time. All right. Until next time.